Hi everyone. Welcome to Thursday's 30 minute yoga class or whatever day you're doing this if you're doing it after. 30 minutes. Um, getting set up in your space with your yoga mat. If you've got a block or a towel to use for support for any of our moves, water stays close by and uh, taking child's pose anytime you need it if you feel like that's what's going to serve you best today. Um, we talk a little bit about setting intention for our classes. So as we do a yoga class, sometimes people are wanting to focus on being um, more mentally present in their practice. Some people are working on strength. So can I hold a pose longer? Uh, and some people are working on flexibility. So can I do something uh, that's a little bit, uh, asking a little bit more of my body than I'm used to delivering and, and am I stretching more? So whatever your intention is today, um, think about what you wanna get out of the class. Uh, go easy on yourself as well. So if you're not meeting what you intended, that's okay. It's just not gonna happen today and that's fine. It's not about reaching goals and then being disappointed for not doing that. It's about, uh, it's like the, uh, the destination. It's not the, uh, the ultimate, it's the, the journey. So enjoy your practice today. Um, whether it's mindfulness, flexibility, or strength you're searching for, um, just enjoy the path and the journey you're going on. Okay, so let's uh, get into our first Shavasana position. Coming down and connecting with your mat, with the floor, getting nice and settled, getting used to different parts of your body, connecting and touching the floor. You're not always used to feeling your shoulders or your back. Always connecting with our feet. Sometimes this is just a little different, and that's okay, different is good. So relaxing through the shoulders, easing up the tension that might be held in your forehead, peeling your tongue away from the top of your mouth. Relax down your arms. Fingers are likely just curling in a little bit. Paying attention to your breathing in and out, chest and abdomen rise up and down. Relax through the glutes, through the abdomen, and all the way down your legs. Your feet roll out to the corners of your mat. Those toes are nice and relaxed. Another option, if you like it better, is placing one hand on your chest and one hand on your abdomen. And as you do that, breathing in and out, you get that sense with your fingers, your hands, your arms, the rising up and down. It just adds another dimension, another feeling, another experience to your class. particularly when we start to take longer and deeper breaths, which is where we're going right now. So inhaling through the nose. And right now, keep it exhaling through the nose. And pretending you've got a mirror just underneath your nostrils and you're trying to fog it up. So as you inhale, that's almost normal, but as you exhale, do it in such a way that you try to get that mirror fogging up. Do that again. And it may even become a little more audible as you do that. Now let's inhale through our nose. Open the mouth and really sigh it out. And again, in through the nose, out through the mouth.
just relax when you're breathing at your pace. Just a few more rounds of being conscious of the in and out of the up and down. On your next inhale, stretch out nice and long, fingers and toes opposite direction. And as we exhale, we bring the knees in and we hug the knees close to the chest, even choosing to roll up into a little ball. And if you did that, slowly come back down and we're going to have the balls of our feet flat edges of our feet up towards the ceiling we're going to grab on to our shins ankles or outside of our feet and go into our first happy baby and you can start to slowly open your eyes keeping your, the gaze soft if you're doing that rolling back and forth just a little massage in the lower back Come into stillness, releasing your feet, one last hug in, and then raise the right arm above your head, rolling over to the right side, and slowly pressing up and coming into table. Our fingers are spread nice and wide. Wrists are underneath our shoulders, elbow creases pointing forward. We sag the belly down, inhale in our cow and into our cat as we exhale, pushing shoulders and back up towards the ceiling. Back into cow, side of the belly, inhale, and exhale, into cat. Two more at your pace. And when you're done, coming to a flat back table, moving those hands just slightly forward, propping up onto your toes if you did have your feet flat. We're going to push up into our first downward facing dog. So puppy is also an option, keeping those knees on the ground and pushing back, but keeping the hips off of your heels if you're in puppy. If you're in downward dog, taking it for a walk, slowly moving side to side, so it's not a quick walk. Feeling the extra stretch down the back of the legs, through the calf, hamstring, and then coming to stillness, pointing the tail up to the ceiling and really stretching through those arms and shoulders. Come up onto your toes, bend the knees, look forward. Make your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale down. Inhale all the way up. Forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands down, step back your left foot. Bring the knee down, coming to a lunge. Bring your hands up onto your thigh. You can leave them here. Hands at heart center or cactus arms. So find what feels best for you as we're in the beginning of our practice. So you may want to stay here or here as we're still warming up a little bit. And let's bring our hands back down. We're going to come up on that back knee and just move the back foot in slightly and go on an angle so that your back toes are pointing towards 10 o'clock on a clock. So about a 45 degree angle. And we're slowly going to come up and raise our arms into warrior one. So closed hip pose. So our hips and our shoulders are all still trying to point forward. Breathing through this, 
you don't like the hands up option, keeping the heart center. And we're going to slowly come up onto our toe of the back leg and turn that foot so now they're both pointing straight ahead. We're going to push our weight forward onto our front foot and we're going to slowly come into a warrior three pose. So right into a balance pose. So if you don't like the balance pose, you can stay in your warrior one. You can go into a crescent lunge. So if you'd like to try that warrior three, you're starting to bring the shoulders leaning forward, lifting that leg to the back. Our standing leg has a micro bend in the knee. Arms can come alongside your body. And now slowly bring foot in to meet your top foot. Inhale, forward fold, flat back. Hands down, stepping back, both feet. Going into our first flow, Chaturanga Dandasana. You can do high or low plank, keeping those elbows close to your body, coming up into a cobra and pushing back through table or right into downward facing dog. And maybe it's another little walk. And then coming to stillness. Again, pointing that tail up towards the ceiling. Up on your toes, knees bend, look forward, walk to the top of your mat, flat back, exhale down. Inhale all the way up, forward fold, flat back, hands down, stepping back, right leg, and bringing that knee right down to the ground. So starting in our lunge position, bringing the upper body so that your shoulders are back, feeling a stretch through the hip flexor of that back leg. Options for arms. Maybe you're ready to do cactus arms and engage those shoulders, shoulder blades. Pretending there's a grapefruit under your chin so that we're not tilting back too much to the back of the neck. And let's bring the arms down. Popping up that back knee, moving the foot in just a little bit and bringing those toes on an angle on the back foot. So now they're pointing to about two o'clock and we slowly make our way up again. Warrior one, second side. So again, we want to focus on our hips and make sure we're not opening and rotating out. Hips forward, shoulders forward. You can even have arms going forward if you don't like them up here. Taking in a few breaths. Check to see where your tongue is. Feel it off the top of your mouth if that's where it's stuck. And now we're going to bring our hands to heart center. Come up onto your toes, back foot, and pressing forward so that we're going to start balancing on that front leg. So maybe you just drag those toes of the back foot a little closer. And at your comfort level, we start to tilt forward. And maybe that means I'm just lifting my toes just a few inches. Maybe you're comfortable with going a little further. Micro bend in that standing leg, toes of that back foot. Coming back and pointing towards your nose. And again, options for your arms. Breathing. And now slowly coming back to stand. Deep breath in. Forward fold. Flat back. Hands down, step back. Your choice of flow. High or low plank. Adding in push ups. 
and maybe you're now coming up into an upward facing dog. Leading back in downward facing dog. Taking the right leg up behind you, three legged dog. Bring that knee into your right elbow. Just hover. Back into three legged dog. Inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Extend the leg. You can leave it resting on the ground. We're going to lift up our left arm, and your option is to lift up the right foot. Side plank, one leg. And let's slowly bring the hand down, back into three-legged dog. Bring that knee through, and come right up into high crescent lunge. So, higher onto the ball of your foot, back leg. Really engaging that back leg, trying to put, pull your front heel, the heel of your front foot to the toes of your back foot. So try and curl your mat. On your next inhale, turning that back foot, heel to arch alignment, warrior two. Checking your front knee. You can see your toes beyond that knee and your front thigh is pushing out. Turning your front palm, exalt your warrior. Back to warrior two. And curve your hands down, stepping back. And your choice of flow. And maybe your upward facing dog is getting a little higher. Maybe not. Leaning back in downward facing dog. Lifting the left leg up behind you. Bringing the knee in to your elbow. Hover just for a second. And back and inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, and then extend the leg, leaving the foot on the ground as we slowly roll over into a one-legged side plank, top arm reaching up, elbow pulling back, and then your option is to lift that left foot off the ground. and slowly bring your body facing your mat back into three-legged dog. And now bring the knee into your nose and step forward, getting ready to come right up into high crescent lunge. Let's come up onto the ball of the back foot, really engage that back leg. So my breathing has increased quite a bit. I'm not sure about yours. Just paying attention to it. On my next inhale, your next inhale, pop up the back foot, pivot so that we have heel to arch alignment, moving into warrior two. Checking the shoulders, relaxing them down, checking our front knee, making sure it's not pressing over our toes. Lift your front palm, lean back and exalt your warrior. Back to warrior two, and then cartwheel right down. Step that leg back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Your version, your flow. Keep your knees on the ground. We're going to take them wider than your, than your toes. We're going to sit back 
And just take a few breaths in child's pose. So you may really be aware of your heart rate right now, pace of your breathing, your back body doing the expanding. And we're going to get ready to come up, either moving through table or going right into downward facing dog. On your toes, bend your knees, walk forward to the top of your mat. Flat back inhale, exhale down, inhale all the way up. Hands come to heart center, and I'm going to turn sideways so you can see me. I'm also going to have my yoga block close by, and you can choose to have yours as well. So knowing you have different heights on your yoga block, we're going to go into our crow pose. So we start first with feet grounded and decide what side you're going to stay standing on. So I'm going to stay standing on my left foot. So it grounds, I pop up on my toe on my right leg, make sure I have a slight micro bend in my standing leg. And now I cross over. So. I should have put my block on the other side. Just a slight little change. So my block is here so that I can use it as a prop. And then I can just lift my toe off every once in a while if I want to work into balance. So it's like I'm trying to cross my legs, keep the thighs and lower legs nice and close. And I slowly start to sink down a little lower. My arms. I can have them, and right now as I'm moving my arms, maybe I just want to use that block for balance. I can hug my shoulders. I can bind my arms once, or I can move my hands and do a double bind. And then again, every once in a while, I can remove my foot from my block. There we go, lift it up. And as you work on your balance, Maybe your next challenge is how deep you go into your seated position. Breathing. And slowly standing up, releasing, stepping wide with an inhale. Exhale, bring those hands to heart center. And then just bring them down to your side. And a few breaths in mountain pose. And knowing now I'm going on to my second side, if I want to use my prop, I move my block over. This time we'll be prepared. Standing leg is my right leg. So I'm grounding through, I'm working my toes, making sure all points on the bottom of my foot are connecting to the ground. Pop up my left leg, crossing over, and getting ready to support on that block if I need it. This time, if I hug myself this way, I want to alternate the top arm. So just trying to make that switch. Again, your options are back of the hands meeting or going into a double bind with those hands. Focusing on one spot helps with balance. And then once you have that balance, Try to sit a little deeper without leaning forward. Breathe. And slowly come out. Release the arms and legs. Deep breath in. And out. Bring your hands to heart center. And I'm going to join you again at the top of your mat. One more. Inhale in. Swan dive down, flat back, hands down. Let's do one last flow here. 
Northeast Ohio, with or without push-ups, cobra or upward facing dog. And now let's land in table and just go into puppy. So keeping those hips a little higher than the heels. And now come forward and we're gonna roll over so that we're sitting on our mat, nice and tall. Making adjustments so that you're on your sit bones, your legs are extended and your toes come back towards your nose. Inhale, and as we exhale, we lean forward, hinge at the hips, your hands on your shins, ankles, or the outside of your feet. Slowly releasing, sitting up tall again. Inhale. And exhale, hinge forward again. Sometimes we find on our second or third pass doing the same move that we can increase our flexibility, sometimes not. Observation, not expectation. Slowly come on back. Bending the right knee, keeping it in close, or crossing over. Right hand goes to the back of my mat, but I don't lock the elbow. Reaching up with my left arm, and as I inhale, I reach as high as I can. As I exhale, I start to turn, look over my right shoulder, perhaps hugging that knee in or maybe even taking the elbow to the outside of that right thigh. Slowly unwind and just turn slightly in the other direction. Then come back to center, little shake, and then the same thing on the other side. So either land in your foot so if it stays right by your inner thigh, or crossing over, back hand. It's going to support you, but we're going to keep the elbow in a micro bend, reaching up the right arm, and then inhaling, reach higher. Exhale, start to turn and either hug that knee or press your elbow to the outside of the thigh. Take a few breaths in here. Trying to stay nice and tall. And now slowly unwind that and even go a little bit towards the other side. And come back to center. Just move those hips down a little bit and slowly bring your back, your shoulders, your head all the way to the mat. Bringing those heels close to your lower back. I'm just going to do one or two bridge poses. So as we start to engage the core, we slowly lift those hips up. We can also use those blocks here when we're doing a bridge pose if we feel like we want some support or you can bring your hands under your hips. Your inner thighs are squeezing in together so that we engage those muscles. Squeeze the glutes. Slowly roll the back down, one vertebrae at a time. Let's bring those knees in, roll into a little ball. Slowly back down, and let's do one more bridge pose. So again, set those heels close to your lower back. Slowly squeezing, lifting, dig those heels in, squeeze those inner thighs. Some people like to even grab the edges of their mat. Give them a little bit of resistance as they lift up. And slowly bring that down. Last roll in, bringing head and shoulders up and slowly bring it down. Extending those legs, 
and getting ready to go into your last Shavasana. Relaxing any parts of your body that still might be holding tension. Send your breath there. Just ask yourself, how does my breathing feel different than what it was when I started? Not with Not with any, I don't know how to stop this. There we go. Not with any judgment on whether it's better or worse, good or bad. Just whether it's different. And if it's not different, that's not good or bad either. So just a few more breaths here. And again, if you don't have to leave, you stay in your Shavasana and enjoy a little bit more time in a mindful practice. And if you do have to leave with me, fingers and toes just slowly start to wake up. We're going to bring those feet in. One last hug. And you're going to choose which side you roll onto as we come up and help ourselves into a seated position. Getting comfortable, hands at heart center, eyes stay in a soft gaze or still remain closed. So whatever your intention was today, whether it was a mindful practice, a strengthening practice, a flexibility practice, or if it was simply a time to connect with people that you haven't seen for a while. I hope you got out of it what you needed. Your participation and your support always helps me have a good practice, so thank you for that. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.